So Google has this new dev release in Chrome Canary 127, where essentially we have this built-in large language model in our Chrome. And what that really means is that you can essentially build or interact with the large language model offline on your device. And I'm not sure how I feel about it yet, but I mean, the fact that you can run it locally brings in some pretty interesting use cases in what we can build. So for example, I was like tinkering around and I built this little simple AI power voice meeting summarizer, you know, it listens for things and it summarizes it based on that large language model. Um, you know, so you can build some interesting things with it, but fundamentally at its root, right? What really Google is doing is, is providing an object called AI. So if you know anything about JavaScript, what we have in sight here is we have this thing called Windows. And inside this window, we have various different types of objects that we can use as well. And one of those objects is going to be AI. And what this AI does is it provides us a bunch of methods or APIs to interact with that large language model. And the reason we don't see it is because we're not currently in that dev release. But yes, the idea is that it provides us different types of methods, which we can use that API inside our projects and build some interesting applications. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to need to download Chrome Canary. Um, and so since I already have it installed, I'll just get started with it, right? So when you have Chrome Canary installed, right, you're going to go over the Chrome flags and there's two configurations that you're going to need to update inside there. The first one is you're going to first need to enable that prompt API. So I'm going to simply click enable here. And then the second thing we're going to do is essentially work with the optimization guide on device. So I'm going to simply say enable bypass per requirement, and I'm going to relaunch. And when I relaunch that, to verify this, uh, basically, we need to go over to our components. So the thing is, is that when you actually enable this, what you're actually doing is you're downloading that large language model into your browser. So you need to make sure that you have at least two gigabytes of storage free to install that large language model. And uh, for a lot of you guys, because remember, I already have this installed, right? Um, it's already ready to go for me. So you're going to see this thing called optimization guide on device model. And as of now, it has installed that large language model. Um, for a lot of you guys, since this is your first time doing it, it's going to say something along the lines that component is downloading. So if you want to verify that process, what we can do inside here in Chrome Canary is I can go to inspect, go to console, and you're going to see that we already have access to this window.ai. So if I go inside here and I say, wait, AI can create text session, for me, it's going to say readily, which means that the large language model is already installed to my computer. I can immediately start working with it and playing around with it. Uh, for a lot of you guys, it might say something along the lines of downloading afterwards. Uh, basically, as an indicator to say that basically you need to wait for the large language model to download before you can start interacting with this API. Uh, so since I have that already ready to go and I have this optimization guide on device model, I'm going to build this application. So what we're going to be building is this. And I know it's completely hideous, it's ugly, uh, but it's definitely going to get you a fundamentals of whether or not you want to build as an HTML React. Uh, I just want to show you guys of how we can interact with the API. And so what I'm going to do inside here, and I guess I can show you an example too. If I said hi, right, it's going to respond back to hey there. And I said, what is your name? And I click send, it's going to respond back. I'm a large language model. OK, well, that's not exactly a name, right? So it's not the most brightest large language model compared to ChatGPT or Claudia AI. But for its usage where you can run it locally, I think it brings in some pretty interesting use cases. Um, and it's a pretty good start. So let's get started with our Visual Studio. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an index at HTML. And we're just going to do this completely from scratch. So I'm going to do exclamation mark, click tabs, so we don't have to write this boilerplate code. And really, we're going to have four HTML elements. Uh, the first one we're going to have is just a simple like h1 tag. And I guess I can call it Chrome AI chatbot. And the next thing we're going to have inside here is a div, which is going to essentially have our little chats inside. And then I need to have input where I'm going to be adding those texts inside here. So ID input, type text. You could name it probably something better than what I did. <laughs> and then the placeholder, something along the lines of like uh, enter your message here. And I close that, slash input. No, not body. And then the last thing we're going to need is to have a simple button that says send which is going to contain our, uh, I think it's going to basically have an on-click, right? Where we're essentially going to send the message. 
So this is a function that we're going to be writing inside here. All right, so now that we're done with this, we're going to just have a simple script tag, which is going to contain all of our various different types of logics. We need to actually create a variable first, uh, which is going to contain our model. So what I'm going to first do is I'm going to write async function in it text session. So I'm going to start the session inside here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to check is that if the window AI does not exist, right, then we're going to just simply throw an error. Chrome AI API not available. And then if that looks all good, let me just add a semicolon. Um, if that looks all good inside here, and of course you want to add some error handling, but for our case, uh, I'm just going to just jump into interacting with the code and you can add error handling on your own side. But I'm going to say AI session is going to equal await AI that create text session. So we need to create the session first because this is where we're going to be adding a lot of our, this is going to allow us to write our prompts. And so once it has created that session, I'm just going to simply console.log AI session created. And what we're going to do next is I just need to make sure I run this function, text session, and we're going to see whether or not this function. So I have this extension called open life server, or you can open up the file. So I'm going to open this up. And right now it's currently in my, my original Chrome. So make sure you take this and run it in Chrome Canary because Chrome Canary is the one that contains that information. So now if I go over to my inspect, you're going to see it says AI session created. So we're off to a good start, right? So the next thing we're going to do inside here is we're going to create a function to actually send messages. So I'm going to create a function, add a message. This is simply going to take our message text, and we're going to simply have it say document, get element ID, which is going to simply take in that input, or sorry, that chat. And we're going to say enter HTML. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say the message, and we're just going to simply make a breakpoint, breakpoint element. So every time a message is sent by either me or the, the robot, we're going to have a breakpoint so we can uh, have a, the message spaced out from each other. Right? So that's all we're going to simply do for the add message. And then we need to create a, a function where we're actually going to send the message as well. And so this is where it gets exciting because we get to start interacting with that prompt. So the thing is, we need to get the essence of that input. So I'm going to say input document, get element by D. And then I want to get the message inside here as well. So message input that value, that trim. OK. And you know, obviously, if there's no message, we want to return and not do anything about the process. Uh, but if we do have it, right? then I'm going to simply say me. So this is you right here. And then basically, what we're going to add inside here is the message. right? So we add it to the chat box or the chat bot. And um, I think also I'm going to say input. Right, We want to clear it as well, too. So input that value is going to be cleared uh, if I do do that. So now, this is where the AI comes in. So the first thing we need to verify is that the A session does exist. So if there's no AI session, then we can simply add a message inside here that says, look, AI says, sorry, I am not available right now. And then we just simply return. And now what we can do is we can actually get the response of the AI. So I can say const response is going to equal to await. I'm going to say AI session. And this is where we start doing the prompt. Right? So now we can use the prompt inside here. And this gets really exciting. So what I could do inside here is I could just simply add the message inside here right? that we're requesting. And once it processes that message, then I just simply use that function again, add message. And I just simply say AI, so very similar to the human thing we did. And I just simply say plus response. And voila, that's basically all we have to do. So you can see that we initialize the session and we basically create a prompt uh, for the AI to communicate back to us. So now if I were to save this and I go back inside here and I refresh this, if I were to say hi, send message is not defined. OK, so I probably just misspelled something. I added too many S's. OK, so let's go back inside here and I click Save. If I say hi now, hey there. Oh, and I think I did another error as well. I already see the problem. I have to plus equal this. So now if I go back and I say hi, it responds back to me. 
And if I were to say something along the lines of, uh, how old are you? I am kind of curious about that. That does a respond back. As English, I do not have a personal ability. Okay, so response back. But yeah, uh, so there's tons of interesting things you can build with this. Uh, I know it looks like a simple to-do list and it looks ugly, but this is probably a good base for you guys to start with to interact with the API. Um, and so I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys build with this. I'll see you guys later. Bye.